What's up, good people? Marcos here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's had a great Monday. The 24-hour rule is in effect. That means you have 24 hours to enjoy a victory. You wanted a victory? I wanted a victory. We got ourselves a victory. Now, of course, the talking heads are out there discrediting the Cowboys getting a win. You know, you know how that is. That now it's just Mac Jones and crew just sucks ass. And, of course, it doesn't mean anything that the Cowboys beat them. I get that. They aren't the best of teams. And so on. So, be that as it may, there were a lot of teams last year that weren't exactly the cream of the crop that the Eagles beat on their way to going to the Super Bowl. Just pointing that out. Just pointing it out. So you need to stack together enough wins to get you a chance in the big dance. We got a big week starting tomorrow. We got to be laser focused on the San Francisco 49ers. Now, here's one of the points I've been making throughout the years. When you look at teams, Super Bowl teams, typically they have a couple of things that are in common when they make that run for the Super Bowl. One, they get a lot of sacks. Two, their turnover ratio, they're always pretty much on the plus side. They don't turn over the ball as much and they get takeaways. Three, a lot of them have great tight ends over, say, the last 12 years or so. When you start looking at the top teams in the NFL, you know, you look at San Francisco with George Kittle. You look at Pat Mahomes, of course, with Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. You look at the Eagles with Dallas Goddard. You look at Tom Brady, who had Gronk. And also, before he went cray-cray, Aaron Hernandez. Um, and you think about some of the best years Tony Romo had. He had Jason Witten, his uh, security blanket. In fact, here's what's crazy is that term originated with the Dallas Cowboys and Troy Aikman and Jay Novacek. You know, we all think of Troy Aikman and think that Troy Aikman, or okay, let, let, let me rephrase this. Some of y'all out there think that Troy Aikman was just great by himself, and if he had been on any other team, he would have still won three Super Bowls. That ain't necessarily the case, y'all, because without the NFL leading rusher, we saw two games to start the season after the Super Bowl that were losses without Emmett Smith. I'm not trying to say anything bad about Troy Aikman, but I'm trying to point out to you something that is really, really big. And having that guy, also having guys like Michael Irvin, who also is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, he still needed to have Jay Novacek as his security blanket. The guy that he could go to when all hell broke loose. You follow what I'm saying here? Tight ends are really, really important. They're a possession guy. They can also help disguise the offense. When you have great tight ends that can catch and block, it puts the defense so they don't know if you're blocking or you're out on the roof. We saw uh, George Kettle with that big catch down the middle that broke our back. We just did. So as we start to, to, to look here, that's one of the things that we've been kind of lacking. Safety is another thing we've been lacking. Now we've got some safety. Defensive line, something we've been lacking. Now we've got some defensive linemen that can actually do some stuff. Sacks, you know, we sometimes were in the 20s, high 20s, low 30s. Now we get sacks. We are right now number one at taking the football away and not giving it back. We're plus nine. And that's not only the defense, guys. That's also Dak Prescott, who only has one interception on the season. 
So back to the tight end situation. The first week of the season, our offense didn't quite look like it were really our offense. They weren't great by any stretch of imagination, but they didn't have to be because special teams got a touchdown, defense got a touchdown. It was 14 nothing before the offense even got out there. But we saw our young tight ends dropping passes in the end zone. And you start looking and saying, we've got three young guys between Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot, and of course, Schoonmaker, who did not practice during training camp because of the plantar fasciitis in his foot. And then there's McKinnon too, who's really a blocking tight end. And so you start looking at that and saying, maybe we can do, you know, um, tight end by committee. Because we looked at Jake Ferguson the first week, two catches, 11 yards. It's not exactly elite tight end play. Second week, he got three catches for 11 yards. To the Bill Belichick. Okay. Then last week, five catches, 53 yards. Okay, that's a lot better. And then yesterday, having a great, great day. Best day of his career. Seven catches for 77 yards, 11 yards per reception. And now all of a sudden you start to say, oh, Nelly. Because now when you have that guy, when you start doing 12 personnel, you don't look at him just as a blocker. You look at him as really a receiver. Because see, these are some of the things that you can start doing when you have guys that are tight ends that can catch. And you have a running back that's dynamic like a Tony Pollard. You know, I'm 12, Mr. 12 personnel. It's personal to me. Okay? You can come out to tight ends, close formation. Tony Pollard in the backfield, right? You've got, you know, Michael Gallup and you've got CeeDee Lamb. You shift. You shift. Tony Pollard goes outside, empty backfield. You go ahead, shift, split out, Jake Ferguson. And then you also have Peyton Hendershot or Schoonmaker. So now you've gone from what looks like a true running formation to five wideouts. And if Jake Ferguson, who was targeted seven times, came down with the ball seven times for 11 yards a catch, all of a sudden that makes your offense that much more dynamic. That is an element that's been missing since Jason Witten was a younger guy. Jason Witten, towards the end of his career, wasn't that same dude. Oh yeah, he'd still catch the ball because teams looked at it and said, Jason Witten's not going to break our back. He'll catch the ball, but he's not going all the way. We got to be more worried about Amari Cooper and things. So they would actually give it the space to Jason Witten because they were hoping that that would be the guy to get the ball because you had better odds of it being, you know, a direct stop than it would be somebody going to the house like Michael Gallup or Amari Cooper. But now that you got Jake Ferguson, that all of a sudden, if he continues on this trajectory, now at the moment, he's got 147 yards. He's on pace for about 650. But you see, from 11, 11 to 53 to 77, if he can maintain that 50 to 80 yards right there, all of a sudden you're looking at a guy that could be approaching a thousand yard season. And that's, that would be very, very helpful, especially when the weather turns, especially when you start getting into the playoffs, you need that extra weapon that's reliable. And as much as people kept talking about, well, the Cowboys keep going to the tight ends, we need to get those guys work. The only way you're getting work now in the NFL is on the games. You can't do it in practice. It's not full speed. You're not getting tackled in real time. It's not 100%. And I think that this was by design to constantly go to these tight ends. You start going to the tight ends, teams see it, and they keep throwing to the tight ends. They try and stop that. Then you can start basically lulling them to sleep and start using your wide receiver. Start getting Brandon Cooks going deep and things. These are the kind of games where you start playing that you set people up. As opposed to just being one-dimensional with, you know, Kellen Moore as much as everybody's saying, oh, I want Kellen Moore, I want Kellen Moore back. What you have to understand is this is, we're not going to beat ourselves and lose that way. 
We're not going to make the mistakes. We're not going to go full foot on the throttle. We're going to be efficient. We're going to run out the clock. We're going to keep our defense fresh. And ultimately, if we can play with the lead, we will kill people. That's the way you got to go. So we'll see how it works, but you got to like what you're seeing from Jake Ferguson. If he continues, you could start talking to him like some of the really good tight ends in the NFL. All right, we're going to be live streaming the Giants game here in about a half hour or so. And uh, I've been working up here. I need to go downstairs and wet the walls down there because before you can put plaster on them, you got to wet them down for a couple of days. So the plaster literally sections, it sticks to it. If the walls aren't wet, it'll just fall off. But I've got over here, let me show you guys. Look at this. Been working over here a little bit. Been working over here a little bit. This is my studio setup. Okay, I've built my table. The top. cool thing about this is this is a drop leaf desk. This drops down, the legs fold up on it. It's all the wheels, and I can put it against the wall when I'm not here. But it can be wheeled around wherever I want to be. I'm going to cover it with the antique heart pine and stuff and varnish it, but it works perfectly. I got my mic, got my mic mixer, everything I need to do a live stream and stuff from right here. So we're getting here. We're getting here. And the other cool thing is, I don't know if you've noticed this, with the white walls and the black and stuff trim and things and the lighting we have in here, I don't need any extra light. It's like perfect, okay? It's, okay. it's perfect except I'm not perfect, okay? I'm but ugly. I'm serious. I, you know, I'm old and wrinkled and all that, but you can see it clear as day. So come Halloween, it's perfect. All right, see you at the live stream. Peace.